Hello, as promised, the second part of creating the mobile apps using Apache Cordova for let's create or let's build a cross-platform application tutorial. I would like to first look into the required assets that we need to build Cordova projects, create those resources. And yeah, if we, if we are good in time, I will shrink it down to this single video where we actually create a build script for automating or to automate the Cordova mobile build. Okay, so let's get started. Um, let's create a new feature. I've already, you know, merged uh, the Cordova prepare branch that I created in the last video back into the develop uh, branch. So let's create the new one and call it Cordova resources. And the Cordova CLI will um, will generate or scaffold the uh, entire project for us, depending on the, the argu arguments we pass uh, to the CLI. So let's go to our sources directory because, because we want to um, we want to have the, the resources for our Cordova project right in the source directory. And that's everything or the only thing that should belong to the repo. That are only the required assets that we need to build the Cordova app from scratch. Okay, so Cordova, Cordova create takes some arguments. And first argument is the folder that the CLI will generate for us. Let's call that mobile-client. Then followed by a unique identifier for our mobile app. Um, it's a common uh, pattern to use a reverse domain name uh, right here, like rocks.xplatform.mynotes. Um, third argument is the display name of our application, which is my notes and let's generate it. Okay, so we end up with uh, having a new folder called mobile client and if we go inside of mobile client, um, we have a bunch of new stuff right here. There's the center of gravity for Cordova projects, the config XML. We will look into that in a second. There are hooks, so you could hook into Cordova's build chain and um, execute user-defined uh, scripts um, in different um, places right in the in the build chain. And platforms is the folder where uh, Cordova will place all the native projects like the Xcode project for iOS, the Java project for Android and so on. Plugins are a kind of modules that you can use to uh, have a single JavaScript API which bridges down to the native APIs uh, like the, the Xcode API on iOS, like the Java API on Android and the C-Sharp APIs on Windows. Um, so plugins go to the plugins directory. And last but not least is the www folder. So this is the most important folder we find right here, right? Because right in that there is um, the actual web application that uh, will be represented to the user as our app. and. Cordova creates a, a kind of yeah a skeleton, right? We don't want that skeleton. We can, of course, add another argument to Cordova CLI, which is called link to, and we could link to an existing folder. And that's exactly what we want to. So we have all our single page application being compiled to the dist web folder, and we want that. We want that to use during the build, but we don't want that to go to the source control because you may run into some issues with having um, co-workers that use Windows as a main operating system and checking out um, sim links on Windows will not work without, you know, uh, yeah, more complex configuration. So the easy way is to create only uh, to create all those things on the fly that we um, were system dependent or depending on the current context. But um, as I said, uh, the config XML is pretty important. So it's a, uh, it's just you know listing all the metadata and all the yeah plugins and platforms that we've installed in the scope of our project. Right now, we don't have installed any pro any platform and we don't have installed any plugin like 
Um, but there is a um, yeah, mandatory plugin called Whitelist, which allows the Callaway app to talk to predefined um, origins. By default, all origins are allowed. That's definitely something you should look into before publishing an app to, to an app store. Okay, but let's use Cordova CLI. And let's call Cordova platform and it lists the install platforms. Right now there is none and all are available. So let's choose Cordova platform at iOS. And don't forget dash dash save because only with dash dash save the platform will be um, written to the config XML file. So right now, Cordova is going to pull down all the required binaries for iOS, for iOS app um, from NPM and injects them into my Cordova project. Okay, now it's fetching the plugins and we're done. Cool, let's review the, the config XML. And as you see, engine name iOS is listed down below. Okay, but let's get rid of those things that not should go to source control, like platform, platforms, like plugins, and uh, dub, 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 folder. Okay, and that's it. That, these are the resources. Well, of course, at some point in time, you may add a splash icon, a splash screen, you may add um, icons, you may add um, some other assets. Um, but these are the only assets that we need right now to get a minimal, minimal valu valuable product up and running, right? Okay. But instead of, you know, um, executing all those build commands from the from the command line, it would be nice to, to use shell.js that we've already installed in a past video uh, and in order to create a script that takes care about all the building and recreating the Cordova project on the fly stuff. So let's say all those scripts belong to the scripts folders. And let's create a new Cordova file. Um, I will make this file an executable file, but we will use an npm script which calls node and passes Cordova.js as an argument um, because it also applies the same as for symlinks that um, checking in and checking out executable files will not work on every each and every system, so or may not work on each and every system. So um, let's add. Let's make the script executable for now to have a better integration. And um, in addition to that, let's install Notemon. I I really like Notemon Notemon to to get some fast feedback during development time. So I will use Notemon right now and start uh, the Cordova JS file. And as soon as I make some changes to the Cordova.js file, Notemon is reloading or re-executing the entire script. And that makes it really easy to, you know, see how the build grows and grows and gets more and more direction working, right? Okay, Notemon is installed. Um, let's make uh, one change before starting Notemon. Here's our empty script JavaScript file. Let's make it executable by adding the shebang that points to the node executable or tells uh, the engine at the system that this is an executable node script. And now let's start um, Let's start Nodemon from the node bin directory, Nodemon, and pass scripts slash Cordova.js as a, an argument. <clears throat> okay, so it's waiting for changes before it actually restarts. 
but let's do some changes. Okay. Let's add some pressure to the video. So let's try to speak a little bit less and focus on coding. So five minutes from now, let's speed up a bit. Require shell js slash global to have a global access to those functions. And let's um, yeah get some variables to, you know, don't have all those magic strings flowing through our script, like the um, startup gear equals the, the current working directory, like the mobile dist equals to current directory. And from here we want to dist mobile. And we have the web dist, which is pretty much the same, but not mobile, it's, it's web. We have our Cordova source directory, which is pvd source mobile client. <coughs> Should be good for now. Okay. So we want to have a clean surface uh, when building and we could use the test method to look for the existence of a given folder. In this case, the mobile list folder. And if the folder exists, we would like to uh, remove recursively and force all the files from mobile dist forward slash wildcard selector. Okay. And if not, we would like to make the error and we would ensure that all the folders in the in the string will be generated. If one in the middle, for example, doesn't exist, mobile dist. Okay, if we hit save right now, there should be a mobile folder in the dist folder or it should, um, yeah, it should um, appear at some point in time. Okay, um, next one, we want to create a symlink. There is the nl ln function from our web dist to our mobile dist forward slash dot dot dot. So there should appear a symlink inside of our mobile. Right, here we are. Next one. We want to copy all the things from the Cordova source directory to our dist folder. That's, that should be easy one. Copy RF everything from Cordova source to well to mobile dist. Okay, cool. Next up, we have everything in place. Let's execute. Let's. We have to move into the scope of that folder. So we have our startup there back, backed up to go back. Let's execute CD. Let's go into our web dist. Only one minute twenty-two left, and we want to execute um, Cordova prepare, and we want to execute. Cordova build. And right now, if I move to the terminal, the build should already be running. Oh, made a mistake. I made a mistake. And what was the mistake? We are moving to CD web dist. Oh, not web dist. That's wrong. Mobile dist. And instead of having um, Nodemon running right now, because we are already done or almost done with our development stuff, we want to execute it, but we want to execute it using a script from the NPM file called build mobile. Oh, 
no, right here. So we want to execute node and apply scripts Cordova.js and let's run npm run build dash mobile. Okay, timer <laughs> is just ringing, but I think we are we are also done. So everything is copied in place. It's automatically discovering that iOS has been listed as a platform. So it's pulling down iOS, it's adding iOS, and right now, next it should fetch the plugins. It's fetching the whitelist plugin and it should start a Xcode build from scratch. It's building the project. Yeah, building the project may take some seconds. Come on. Build succeed. Here we are. Let's move to our dist folder. Let's go to the mobile folder and let's say Cordova emulate iOS. It will now double check if there are some changes if so, it will rebuild the app. If not, it's going to deploy the app to, or uh, trying to deploy the app to a physical device. I have not attached a physical device, so it's it will start or trying to look for an iPhone SE emul simulator. I have already started the simulator in the background, and as soon as the connection is established, it will deploy the app. So we should see the app icon appear right here in a second. There it is, my notes the splash screen, the default Cordova splash screen, and it should navigate to our Angular 2 application in, there we are, cool. But there's one thing, we do not pay respect to the Cordova application lifecycle. Um, we have to <laughs> pay respect to the Cordova application lifecycle, of course. How can we achieve that? Well, first of all, we need to load an a script in our in our index HTML. In our index HTML, we need to um, load the Cordova JS file. The the file is not physically located in the in the repository, so Cordova tools will inject them during build time. But we need to load the script. Um, we can achieve that using um, using a function called sed. SED is a command line tool and it's also part of um, part of shell.js so let's execute let's execute SED to enhance the build a bit SED has an, an, a mode called uh, yeah inject and replace as I refer to because we ha can specify um, a search term and we say hey replace that term by some other string. Of course, we have to include our search string because it's replacing, and we have to specify where, where, in which file it should actually um, replace that. So that's um, our mobile list. Dub 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 index .html. Okay. Having uh, having that done, um, we need to, you know, um, let's call to yeah, clean it up again. Um, we can clean it up right after. Not right after the build. We should clean it up by regenerating the the spa output. Mm. We can regenerate the spa output in an in a npm script. And just thinking about which will be the best. Yeah, that should be good. Um, okay, so we have the Cordova JS injected. Um, we can give that a try. npm run build dash mobile. And because our index HTML is only linked to the to the web disk, that's what I was thinking about how to clean it up in a safe way. Well, we could clean it up by just executing the, the webpack build again. <coughs> 
because the the this replacement will take place in the web dist folder not in the mobile dist folder so like this one at some point in time will have a right here a script source cordova yeah i should of course save my changes if i do some changes right <coughs> Let's re let's re execute it. NPM run build mobile. Okay, it's cleaning up, it's reconfiguring the config XML and I thing I place it right before Cordova prepare. So Cordova prepare is running, that means our index HTML should have a reference to the Cordova script. Let's double check that. Yeah, there it is, Cordova JS. Okay, so that's half of the truth. Um, we also have to postpone our Angular 2 application bootstrap mechanism a bit. Because Angular 2 bootstraps as soon as all the scripts were loaded and the, the web page is ready for um, kicking up the, the JIT compiler. And Angular finds the, the custom directive right here. We can easily postpone um, the bootstrapping and pay yeah, pay some respect to 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 Cordova's um, device ready event, which is telling you as a developer that hey the app container has bootstrapped and now it's your turn to, to fire up your app. And we can do so by just wrapping our platform browser dynamic bootstrap module function in a custom function called boots, bootstrap. And if window has a property called Cordova. So if that is defined, we don't want to call into uh, boot the bootstrap or you don't want to call the bootstrap function directly. Instead, we would like to do something like document at event listener for device ready and call into bootstrap at that point. If Cordova on the other side is not defined, we want to call bootstrap immediately to still have the same experience if we execute our um, Angular app in the browser. Okay, so that's everything. Let's move back to the console and let's, um, or let's first align our scripts a bit because we want to build the web and then build uh, mobile and let's call that that's typically a rebuild mobile which is a combination of npm run build web and as soon as that has finished we want to npm run run build mobile. In addition to building and rebuilding, we also want to, to start the emulator directly. Um, that's pretty easy. It's just start, start mobile iOS, which means go to the dist folder, inside of the dist folder, go to the mobile folder and execute um, npm from the npm bin folder please execute please execute um, Cordova emulate iOS and as soon as that has finished go to folders up okay so now we have all scripts in place and we can give it a try let's say npm run rebuild dash mobile which will trigger our webpack build right now. 
after webpack has finished it will trigger our Cordova script which will pull iOS platform again from the web which takes some time due to my hotel Wi-Fi connection and once that is done it will pull down the plugins that were mandatory the wireless plugin and it should start building the iOS project or yeah building project and as you can see the path to the Xcode project somewhere over here all the fancy output from Xcode build build succeeded npm run start dash mobile dash iOS so it's verifying if if there are some changes it it will recompile if not it will build succeeded it's looking for the simulator it might it may it will find my simulator it will see that the app is already deployed it will close the app redeploy and start the app again and right now we have our app on Cordova and also we already pay respect to the Cordova application lifecycle great but only half of the truth how to get Android up and running right now well let's do some um, let's let's add the Android for now and give it a try okay let's go to source mobile client let's say Cordova because remember there's still uh, our config XML right here so let's say Cordova platform at Android dash dash safe and keep in mind oh, it's not yeah true there's the the www folder is missing so let's add it for just to get it working So it's pulling down Android and adding it as a dependency uh, to our config XML. But keep in mind, you have to have installed all the SDKs, all the stuff that the platform gate guide for Android is, is, is telling you. And let's um, yeah, clean it up again. Okay, so our resources folder is again clean, but our config XML is now listing both Android and iOS. Let's go again up. Let's say npm run uh, rebuild dash mobile. And in the meantime, let's go to our npm file and let's add a new start script, not for iOS it's for Android and instead of Android and it's depending on your simulator that you use which command you can use I for example I use Genymotion because Genymotion is a lot faster than a stock Android emulator but Genymotion you have to access the device as a physical device so you have to execute Cordova run Android instead of Cordova emulate Android but well that's something that uh, that can easily be discovered by using Google why this is so that has to there's a combination of the Android device uh, browser daemon that's running on your system and how virtual machines in VirtualBox were treated so do some further research why and how you can wire up Jenny motion as a powerful Android simulator or emulator okay let's double check um, webpack is already done so it's pulling down iOS discovered Android in our config XML pulling down Android and right now once the, the plugins have been installed it will first go ahead and build iOS right after iOS has, has been generated or built it will use an 
it will use Java to build the Android project. This build can, can take up to a minute or two depending on what your system is currently doing and because I'm recording the um, the screencast I will pause my screen for, sh for short time. Okay one minute later I'm and I'm back online. So build is finished. Let's uh, execute npm run start mobile Android which will again verify are there some changes. If not it's looking for my for my emulator and or looking for a physical device it finds uh, a physical device which actually is my Jenny motion emulator right here let's bring it to front side by side with the iOS one the APK so the package has been generated in the back and it will be deployed you see the app is popping up it's the loading animation and boom there it is our single page application on both Android and iOS that's cool okay so that was a lot well first I decided to just get it working finish that video and do all the customization stuff in the upcoming third part but you know so we only have two parts we are done we have our app running on Android and on um, and on iOS, perhaps in the upcoming videos, in some video, we will add the Windows uh, platform and deploy it to using UWP as a desktop app because I don't have any kind of Windows phone or Windows phone emulator or something like that. Um, but yeah, we have a flexible build that could be configured depending on your requirements. And um, yeah, I think that's a that's that's a good job for today. It's uh, almost 1 a.m., so it's it's time to call it a day. Uh, thanks for watching. It would be great if you uh, will leave some uh, some feedback down below in the comment section, and of course subscribe my channel. And if you have any any question, don't hesitate. Just ask. I will give my best to to respond in 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 a short time. Thank you for watching.